Hey everyone and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode we have Laura who wanted to share her encounters and experiences from the Kansas City area here in Missouri. She has had a couple of run-ins with the Ozark Howler and some other strange things while out in the brush. We have all heard of the Momo and the Ozark Howler is just another name for Bigfoot here in Missouri. One question I typically ask my guests who have encountered Bigfoot is, have they had any paranormal experiences in their life? Have they seen any UFOs? I feel like it is important to ask those questions because I know people are only willing to share their Bigfoot encounter and a lot of times it seems people have these other experiences and they are too afraid to speak up because they don't want to be made fun of or they just don't think it's connected. A lot of times the listeners will get pissed off because it's not just about Bigfoot and they refuse to believe that a person has had other experiences as well in their life. No one is saying that it is 100% connected, but after doing the research and talking to a lot of people, typically they have had other experiences too. The Native Americans talked about shapeshifters, and people today talk about shadow people, aliens, and strange beings that seem to be invisible. It's important to consider that a lot of these Bigfoot sightings could be of a higher power and of something way more intelligent than us. Remember, in the end times, people are supposed to be deceived. So always keep that in mind. Also, remember when people used to say Bigfoot didn't exist and that aliens aren't real? Well, now a lot more people are open to that idea, so we have to go even deeper and think outside of the box. Overall, I do think it is possible for Bigfoot to live out in the woods and they have avoided people for thousands of years. I just think there are other unknown forces at play and we have to keep that in mind. If you have a Bigfoot encounter that you would like to share, please contact me by email and I would be happy to have you on the show. If you guys can, please like and subscribe and hit the bell notification to stay up to date with all my future interviews. Alright guys, let's dive into Laura's Bigfoot experiences from the state of Missouri. All right, Laura, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing pretty good. Good, good to hear. I'm glad to have you on the show. And Laura, if you would, tell us a little bit about yourself and your experiences from the very beginning, please. Um, I'm an empty nester. I'm uh, pushing my 60s. I love to be outdoors. Um. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been fascinated with Bigfoot. I'm originally from upstate New York. So um, being down here in this area, um, being outside is one of the things that I love to do. And I love to go camping and things. So, um, yeah, being outside and just being around, you know, nature is one of the things that I cherish. and you know, getting to just anywhere I can camp and, you know, not always having a lot of extra funds whenever I can camp at somebody's property is always a plus. So um, I guess uh, it started um, one night when I was um, at my boyfriend's house, I had been, um, We were getting ready the next morning. We were supposed to take him to the doctors and I had gotten up to go to the bathroom. There had been a rash of fires set and stuff like that, even in fields, people's homes, old buildings and stuff was being set on fire. And I happened to look out the kitchen window and being out in the middle of nowhere on top of a hill. um, And it was in... um, like early spring, so there wasn't a whole lot of trees with leaves on them yet. And I could see like an orangish red glow down through the woods. And I kind of called to him and told him, you know, I thought there was a fire. And he came out and he looked and he was like, um, no, no, that's, that's not a fire. And I was like, well, how do you know? And 
he was he was pretty persistent that it wasn't a fire and I was being pretty persistent that I thought it was and he uh he kept saying well it's not moving and it's not getting any bigger um trust me it's not a fire and he was he's always been that type of person if you if he was trying to pull your leg or pranking you or something, you could tell just by looking at him or looking at his eyes, he just had that look. And if he was being honest, um, you knew it by his demeanor. And I wasn't really paying much attention and I should have. And after he kept insisting, I was like, mm, maybe he's, you know, got something here but I was being stubborn like I have a tendency to be and he said no that that's that's not a fire trust me and um he he just kind of was like I'm gonna just tell you it's it's the howlers they're back don't go outside at night and don't take the dog out till morning and I don't want you going outside. You hear me? And I was like, I could tell he was being serious. And I was trying to figure out what the howlers were. I was just kind of like, what is he talking about? But I, I didn't really question it. And he said, listen, and he, he said, you know, follow me. And I went outside with him. And he said, listen. And, and I said, I don't hear anything. He, it was like dead silent. And usually in the spring, you're starting to hear like crickets and the cicadas are starting. And there was absolutely no sound. And we stood there for a little while. And I heard, you know, I told him I could hear like a dog howl or a wolf howl. But it wasn't, it didn't really sound right for a dog or a wolf howl. It was different. and. Um, he said, yeah. And, um, you could hear like trees kind of like, well, at the time I thought it was just trees kind of maybe falling or branches breaking off and falling, um, and hitting each other. And, um, I would tell him that, you know, that's what I was hearing. And he said, well, let's get back inside. And he told me the howl, the howl I was hearing was not dogs or wolves or anything. It was the howler. And that's how they talk. And they hit on the trees to scare people off. And I almost kind of laughed at him, but the look on his face, I knew he was being serious. And he started telling me about, you know, his aunt who lived in that house and how, you know, she was a type of person that never left the house much she stayed up on that hill you know that's pretty much what she did she didn't go too far and he told me how she always would see you know signs of them see the I guess she would see the glow too and she would tell him all about um seeing these things and hearing all this and because they were they were fairly close and um so he said that they'd been there for many years and and they would come around like a certain times of the year you would hear them out in the woods and stuff so i trusted him and i i believed everything he said and um the next year and it was during the lockdown um so the almost four years ago in april It'll be four years. I decided I wanted to go camping. I was tired of being locked in. And I told him I was going camping. And he kept saying, no, no, you don't want to go out there. You don't. It's not good. It's not a good time. You don't want to do that. And I was being stubborn, as I always am. And I insisted. And he just kept saying, it's a bad idea. You don't want to do that. But he wouldn't say why. So... I took all of my stuff down by the pond, which is quite a walk down over the hill to the one pond. Um, 
and he helped by taking some of the stuff down on the four wheeler and I got my tent and everything set up. I cooked my lunch. He came down at supper time and um we had built a fire pit and he um he came down and we had chicken for supper that night and salad and stuff. And he um he kept saying, Are you sure you want to do this? I can take you back up on the four wheeler. It's not a problem. And I was like, No, I'm fine. He said, Well, call me if you have any problems. I will come right down and get you. And he had a friend that was coming up to get his tractor. And he said, I'm I'm going to be right in the house. I'm going to have the phone right beside me. If you have any problems, just call me. I'll come right down and get you. And he, uh, he was being pretty persistent. And I was kind of like, no, oh, I, I don't, you know, I'm fine. I want to go camping. And I just kind of, you know, was ignoring what he was trying to tell me. And um, later, as it got a little later, you know, I had my everything set up and I could kind of notice things were starting to get real quiet, which wasn't normal as it got darker. And I started to hear, um, like, I heard that same howl. And then I was like, okay. And, and I was feeling very uncomfortable, like I was being watched the entire time. It was like something or somebody was watching me and I kept looking around. I even called for him a couple of times, see if he was like trying to prank me or something. And he, I would have heard the four wheeler cause he, he has a bad back. So I knew he wasn't gonna walk down that hill by himself to just prank me. Um, so I, didn't get an answer from him. So I just kind of was like, okay, it's just, just my nerves, um, you know? And, but when I started to hear the howl, I was like, okay, so maybe, maybe I should have listened to him. And um, I had my flashlight and I was kind of like shining it a little bit. And he, uh, he had told me if I had any problems, you know, call him. And I was like, well, my phone's right here beside me. If I have any issues, I'll call him. But, you know, and then I heard, you know, to the left of the pond, I heard another one of those howls. And I was kind of like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be here. And I um, was like, okay, so maybe I'm not down here alone. And I could hear like the wood knocks. Well, I know they're now they're wood knocks, but I could hear like the banging on the tree. And I was like, okay, so something's going on. And when I really got more concerned about what was going on was when it sounded like something had thrown a rock. And by now it was like dark. And I can hear it hit the ground not too far from me and roll. And that's when I really got concerned and I decided I, I need to go back up to the house because now I'm worried and I'm starting to hear things in the trees, like something walking off in the distance. And it was big. It wasn't like a deer or the squirrels or anything. Whatever it was, was big enough that it was, you know, actually crunching the bigger branches. And I um, I tried calling him and he didn't answer. And I was using my flashlight and I was looking around and trying to see if there was eyes or anything that I could say, okay, it's just a deer or something like that. And there was, I didn't find any eyes or nothing. Um, it was like they were staying just out of sight, but I could still hear, like there would be a knock on one side of me, a knock on the other side. And I kept calling him and he never answered the whole time I was calling. And after about, I don't know, 10 minutes of calling him and hearing all this noise going on, 
it was kind of like they were testing me to see how much they had to push me to get me away from the pond. Um, like I was in their territory when I look back at it. Um, and I was like thinking to myself, you know, as it, and it was just like my hair was standing up on end and I was just ready to get back to where I felt safe. Cause at that point I did not feel like, I didn't feel like I was in danger, but I felt like I was encroaching on somebody's territory. And I decided I'm going to put my stuff in my wagon, I had one of those red wagons you see people pull. So I kind of put my ice chest with my food and stuff in it in my wagon and the things I wouldn't want to leave down by the pond, like my blankets and things. And I kept calling him and calling, and he wasn't answering. He wasn't answering text messages. And at this point, it almost sounded like the noises were getting closer. And I was starting to really not feel safe at this point. And it was like maybe 25 minutes since the sounds had started. And I decided it's time for me to walk up the hill and I had um I poured water on my fire and made sure it was out and started up and it it takes a while to get up the hill to begin with but pulling a heavy wagon and I had to keep stopping and it seemed like I could hear things in the woods as I was going up and I could still hear like the knocking like in the distance, but in the woods, like they were still behind me, kind of like making sure I'm going up that hill. And it took me probably about 15, 20 minutes or so to get up the hill. Normally it's about a 10 minute walk. But um, when I finally got up that hill and he still wasn't answering because every time I would stop to catch my breath, I, I just hit redial and sometimes it would just go straight to voicemail and he wasn't answering he wasn't answering my text messages nothing um like i said it probably took me like 20 minutes to get up the hill and when i got up to the house around the all the way up there and by the garage and i just started yelling out for him he came flying out of the house to see what was going on and met me. And I was all, I was out of breath and I kept trying to tell him, I've been calling you, I'm calling you. And he says, you know, and we got everything inside and he got me calmed down. And he showed me his phone. He never got a single phone call or a single text message from me. And after everything was calmed down, he got me some water and stuff and we got everything in. He said, I am so sorry, please forgive me. I should have not let you go because it's the wrong time of the year. The howlers are out there. He said, that is my fault. I am so sorry, please forgive me. And after that, I, you know, and I told him, I said, that is my fault because I was being stubborn and I pushed the issue and I should have known better. But to actually have that, hearing all the vocalizations and hearing the wood knocks and knowing that they were like you're in our territory you need to leave um and there were a couple other people that said that they've heard things in the woods but they didn't want to discuss what they heard but um i believe there's a lot more that goes on in this area than people want to talk about and i've looked back at some of my old like what I call nature walk videos. They're really hard to watch because it was a really old phone. I can see um, like arches and things like that. And I can't really tell if they were structures. And now that I can't get to that property um, to look, um, to double check if they are structures or not, um, which I would love to get back there and look. But um, yeah, it was, it was definitely an experience. And 
I've always, you know, been curious about Bigfoot ever since I was a young kid. And um, it's not something that scared me off completely from ever wanting to research it, but it definitely reminded me that they are out there and not something you want to um, make angry, I don't think. Yeah. And you say this is south of Kansas City? Yes. Okay. Do, yep. you, do you think they were trying to hurt you? I don't think they were trying to hurt me. I think they were trying to scare me off. Um, it's that time of the year where the, I mean, that pond that, where I was is full of fish. There's a lot of deer. Um, and so that whole area, it, um, it's a, being private property and they don't let only but family hunt there. There's a lot of deer on that property. And I think that um, just coming out of the winter, I was thinking maybe I was infringing on their little hunting area at that time. Because um, Fritz always told me in September and October is another time that we don't want to mess with going camping later on. So, but. Yeah. No, I don't think they were actually trying to hurt me, just getting me out of their area. <laughs> okay. And when you say the howler, you're talking about Bigfoot, right? I've heard the term yes. um the Missouri howler and a lot of people call the Sasquatch that here in Missouri. Yes. Yep. That's what he called it. And when I had asked him, What do you mean by the howler? And he says, well, don't you understand who Missouri Howler is? And I was like, no. And he says, well, it's Bigfoot. And I know some people call um, call it the Missouri monster also is Bigfoot. But, um, yeah, he did say that the Howler was Bigfoot. So, yeah. Okay. And this was four years ago in the spring? You said April? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. So what else did you experience after camping out in that area? Um, the, the, um, earlier in that, like the, um, late summer the year before, um, other than the one animal that we had seen, um, it didn't look like any any dog or anything that belonged to anybody or, I mean, it didn't look like a big cat or anything. Um, just when we've been out hunting and stuff, we've seen like animals that have been left and there's just been bones left. Um, like carcasses of deer out in the woods, um, things like that. But, um, just seeing that one large animal across the road in front of us that um, didn't belong to anybody. It wasn't anybody's dog or anything. Um, I know there's a lot of people in this area that have said that they've experienced uh, UFOs also. So this area is pretty, pretty well known for all of that, it seems like. So... Yeah. And what did the house sound like? Is there anything you can compare it to? It sounded like, um, kind of almost, it would start out like a, almost like a, a wolf sign and like a turn into a howl, but it was really short, like woof, like sound. And but it was really loud and longer. I'm I'm not very good at it because um, I've I've had some damage to my lungs, so getting <laughs> sounds to come out the way I want them to is not going to happen. But it was it was just um, kind of almost a cross between. I wouldn't really say like an. An owl, because not all owls sound the same either, but it was just um, 
gosh, I can't even describe how I want to say. It was just like, it didn't, it didn't last only, but maybe, maybe five seconds. And it was just a, like, um, it's, a, it, it it's undescribable. More, yeah. It's, it's hard to describe the sound. It didn't really, you know, make a sound like other animals would make that I heard, um, I know a lot of people say it mimics different animals, but the one that I heard, um, it was definitely not something I'd ever heard before, not in this area out in the woods. Okay. Yeah, I know what you mean. And, um, yeah, continue with your story. And um, what else happened after this? Um, After I had seen that, um, I didn't know if you wanted the story of the animal we seen on the crossing the road or not. Yeah, I absolutely um, do. I'd like to hear about it. Okay. That one I'd been bringing him home and it'd been, you know, really dry out and coming up, he lived like on a dead end gravel road. So we were coming up a hill and it had come across like through a pasture in front of us and across through and into his front yard and um it was huge i mean this thing was massive it was like the color of a deer but kind of maybe a little more reddish its head was just huge um and it had ears but they were kind of almost like laid back like oh there's a car coming and it had its ears laid back like it's was like okay do i need to run but it really didn't seem to be in too big of a hurry like oh that car is not too close you know kind of thing but ready to run if it had to um and it just had huge massive shoulders big big legs i mean the whole animal was just it was like taking a really big dog and putting it on steroids. Um, it did have a big, thick tail. It wasn't real long, but it did come down most of the way down its um, hind legs. Um, but it was all one solid color. It didn't have like other colors on it. It was just one solid color. Um, and it, you could see its muscles when it moved. Um, it had a really thick neck and a big like chest and when it moved um it was like it was like the joints were like articulated like they they were like like on pivots instead of moving like a regular cat or dog would their joints would move just you know front and back this kind of like they kind of like moved like they were more fluid so it moved different than most animals would um and uh it just kind of shocked us when it went across there and I stopped the car part way up the hill we just sat there and watched and um I had the car in park and he was like we were both like what in the world was that um and after it went by he he was like well I want to get out and look for footprints. And I said, well, when you do, I want you to, you know, when you find a footprint, I want you to put your hands out so I could see, judging by the hay bales where it crossed, you know, I want to see how tall this thing is. And Fritz is about five foot tall. He wasn't a very tall person. And when he found a footprint, it was only, he could only find one um, because of being so dry that it was a partial print and it was like um, about the size of his hand, um, probably about maybe a little bit bigger what we could find. If the whole print was there, it would have been a little bit bigger than his hand. And it was the phone that we took the picture with, he doesn't, I, I have no way to get in a hold of, but I think that phone is the one that 
kind of fell in the burn barrel one day when he was burning trash. Um, so we wouldn't have had the picture anyways. But um, when he uh, when he stood with his hand up and I told him, you know, waved out, you know, stop. Um, it would have been up to mid chest. So it would have been about two ish. The, the animal's shoulders would have come to about three and a half feet tall. Um, so it was a pretty big animal. And of course, you know, he wanted to make sure does this animal belong to somebody? Is it somebody's dog? Because sometimes people around there, um, because of it being farming community all around here, if somebody's dog is loose, they um, don't want it chasing their animals, their cows and stuff. So he was calling around to see if anybody knew if somebody was missing their dog. And, you know, we waited all day and all night and nobody, nobody had heard of anybody having a dog that matched that description that, that was that large. And everybody around here pretty much knows everybody and all their animals. So, yeah, it, nobody had heard or seen of anybody's having a dog like that. And um, it definitely wasn't like a mountain lion or anything. It's, you know, I grew up in upstate New York, and I've seen plenty of those. And this definitely was not a mountain lion. So, um, yeah, it was just massive. And it was quiet, and it when we went to go in the house, his dog was like cowering on the couch, like he had seen it because you know he would have seen us coming up the hill and gotten excited and looked out the window, waited for us. So he probably saw it walk across the yard right in front of the windows, and he was literally cowering on the couch, shaking. So, um, his dog that was inside was definitely afraid of whatever that was that walked right in front of the house so okay what color was this canine creature it was um about the color of a deer but maybe more of an more of a reddish orange color than a deer um so it was kind of like a kind of like a buckskin color um okay. and um what what did the face look like? Did it resemble like a pit bull, a hyena? How can you best describe um, it? Kind of more like a pit bull. It had a squared off snout that come out um, oh, probably a little farther than a pit bull would, but it definitely had that big squared off snout looking to it. It did have... Um, it did have a really big muzzle. It was huge. The muzzle was like really deep. Um, it wasn't like a narrow, like a German Shepherd or something would be more narrow. This was a really deep, thick muzzle. Um, and it was like squarish. And the head was just like, like from the ears it came out and then it came down around and then the nose came out. Okay. So, Would it be similar to like a Rottweiler kind of? Kind of more like a Rottweiler, yeah. Okay. And um, what feeling did you get when you laid eyes on the creature? Um, we both kind of were like uh, a little taken back and a little um, kind of worried. Um, and it just kind of a real eerie feeling like something was not right. It just like things like, and, and it was another instance where things were dead quiet, which up on that hill, things are never dead quiet. There's chickens and everything, but there's there was no sound. It was another instance where there was nothing, no sound, no nothing. And, um, it just kind of made made you feel like you're unsettled. Like, I don't know if that's the right way to explain it, but like there was 
definitely something not, it, it felt like there was something wrong or something not right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, because when people drive, they see dogs all the time. And, you know, when you see it, you're like, oh, that's a dog. That's somebody's pet running around the highway. Right. But when you see something like this, you're like, what the heck was that? Right. And that's kind of how we both felt like we were just kind of stunned and shocked and just kind of sat there and like, he at first was like, do I even get out of the car? Um, but we, once it passed out of our sight, we never saw it again. It was like, it just vanished and we didn't see it go on into the woods. We didn't see it, you know, come the other side of the garage and nothing. It was like, gone which kind of made us stop and wonder where it went which direction it went um we did go out like next day we were like wandering around like where do you know is there going to be tracks out here a path you know does it come out here a lot and we never did find anything that showed any sign of anything being out there yeah and what time of day was this it was probably i'd had him at the doctors at that time because he goes every month well he did go with every month um and took him shopping so it was probably about mid-afternoon about two three o'clock okay so it was midday yeah yeah and what month did you say it was this was probably in probably in late August, early September. Okay. And what do you think the creature was up to? I don't know if it was passing through like territorial or hunting or um, exactly what it was doing. It seems to almost, it almost seems like because hardly nobody's on that hill, like that area get singled out for hunting um i know coyotes like that area also um because there aren't people up there very often um and it's a good sized piece of property up there so um yeah it sounds I, like it was i'm um, looking for food hunting yep yeah because they just come through a pasture and that's what we were thinking as it was out hunting. Okay. And after this encounter, what else did you experience in your life? Um, probably about, uh, I'd say about eight or nine years ago, I had had um, what I thought was a UFO sighting and a lot of people were laughing at me. And that was also not too far from where I'm at now, coming home from um bible study one night and um there's another couple here that do a lot of ufo study and i'd spoken to them about it um and whatever this was that i seen it actually um cut my radio out it came i could see it for like a long ways and it kind of almost hovered like not over my car, but just in front of my car off to the right. And that's when my radio cut off. And my car at that time always made a lot of noise. And it was almost like my car was silent. And it kind of hovered there. And I just had like goosebumps and my hair stood up. And it was almost like I couldn't hear. It was like, it was, it was like everything was so silent. It was deaf if that makes any sense it was deafening and then all of a sudden it just took off like like zoom and it was gone and it was just um three lights um two small ones and a one big one and there was no sound from whatever this was it made absolutely no sound and it came in from i'm trying to get my directions <laughs> from the east and went to the west across the road in front of me. And 
when I told, tried to tell people, a lot of people laughed at me and there were a couple that believed that that's what I saw. And, um, but yeah, that, that was one thing that kind of, um, had bothered me. Um, and then of course, you know, upstate New York is full of a lot of different things that go on and things that people see and and things like that and I I don't know if I'd actually experienced things I know my one brother had and he had told quite a few people about it but that was something that scared him so it's a lot of things have happened. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. And um, have you had any paranormal activity, any ghosts in the house, anything like that? Any voices, orbs, anything you can remember? I am. I've had people tell me I am a seer. I had probably about, um, I can't remember how many years ago, I had been visited by. And, and at first I thought, you know, people are never going to believe me, but I have spoken to some other people when I was a clairvoyant and she says, yes, that is very possible. What you seen, um, I had a, what I thought was a nightmare woke up and there was a child standing next to my bed. There's only like a foot and a half between my bed and my dresser. Um, and there was a, child standing there and I could see through her she had black scraggly hair a hollow looking face um her clothes were tattered and I reached out towards her like I was pushing away from her to try to keep her from me and I screamed out loud and after that I was sick for days I mean physically sick And um, after that, I had what I called my little black death orb. Whenever somebody I knew or somebody I knew of or someone in my family passed, this black death orb would show up and it would be bouncing all over my apartment, shooting around or wherever. And I didn't even have to be home if I was up at Fritz's or something. And like the, the night that my mom, the day that my mom passed, that night before, Um, it was up there and I was like, well, I know she's bad. So that's what I'm seeing it for, but it was right every single time. And I would physically go through and I would ask anybody or I'd look online and see, and it was never wrong. Whenever I would see this black orb, there would be someone I would know that had passed. And I think I quit counting like in the 60s. I quit keeping track of the people that I knew or knew of that had passed. So it'd been, my mom's been gone for over three years. She died in 94, or died in 2019. So it's been four years. So yeah, it's, it's been a lot longer than that that this has been going on. So probably about, I'd say, five years, five to six years that that's been going on. But I've always been able to see spirits, even as a little girl. And I've always been told to be quiet. You don't talk about things like that. Um, my great 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 grandmother was. Um, Blackfoot and she was um, she would read tea leaves and things like that and um, she was very much into the spiritual things and I don't know if I picked up a lot of down through the through the family or something Um, and I know that my kids also experience a lot of paranormal so, um, yeah, that is interesting. And, I wonder if, um, that runs through the family as far as being able to pick up on the paranormal activity. Yes. My oldest granddaughter is very, like, she would know 
before somebody showed up that they're coming and tell us they're coming. Um, when my mother lived in New York, when she had Alzheimer's, my granddaughter would sit there and she was only like five years old and she would say, grandma is sad. And she would tell us everything she was wearing, where she was and what she was doing. And at the time my mother was not able to actually talk to people because she didn't know where she was or who she was. But um, she was very intuitive and um, I don't know if she still has that gift, but I thought it was always because she was um, autistic is why she could do so much of what she did. So. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. I've had people tell me that I'm autistic and I need to go see if um, that's what the doctors say. But I'm like, no, nah, I'm not a autistic. Some people say I have ADHD, but it's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I know my son is um, ADHD and stuff, and everybody's like, well, you should get him medicated. And my kids were never medicated. Um, I did have my daughter medicated, and it made her worse. And I was like, no. And she was a teenager, and even she said, Mom, I'm, this is making me sick. I don't want it. So um, even I won't take medications that they gave me because it gotten to the point where it was making me worse. And I was like, I would rather be able to control myself, learn how to control myself, than to be living in a cloud or worse. Because it had taken my anger to a point where I was ready to fight anybody. And learning skills to take care of yourself is a lot more important than to live in a whole different world than where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. I can agree with that. And, um, do you still experience paranormal activity to this day? All the time. Um, I'll be sitting like in Allen's watching TV or something and I'll swear he's walked into the house and I'll ask him, do you need me to get you anything? Is everything okay? Because he'll be working. He does all the work in his garage back here. Um, and I'm always like, get up and there's nothing there. And I heard the door open and close. Um, the apartment I lived in, it was like like a pathway. I had seen full body apparition of a guy walking down the hallway just as though he was walking down a sidewalk. And he was dressed like in the 50s where they had their T-shirt rolled up with a pack of cigarettes and a blue jeans. I mean, he had his hair slicked back, like, you know, the whole nine yards. And I was like, well, that just happened. <laughs> but I still do to this day. Um, and a lot of times I'll be going down the road and I'll smell like Fritz's cologne in the car. And I'll say, well, I'm glad you're here with me. I'm glad I'm not driving alone today. You know, that kind of thing. Um, and sometimes I just ask for a sign. Is there somebody here with me or, and I do read tarot cards. Um, I don't make a habit of doing it every day or anything like that, but, um, you know, I do it for people if they want it done, but, um, I also, my, I don't know how many generations back it is, but my it would be my like great, great, great something or another aunt is um, Martha Sprague from the Salem Witch Trials. So I also have that on my family. <laughs> so she was one of the first women accused and accuser in the Salem Witch Trials. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Do you feel like the activity that you had while you were camping, the paranormal activity and the strange canine is all connected? Um, after learning more about what goes on, yeah, I do feel that they're all connected. I feel that the more you're open to being able to see things, I think you're more open to having those experiences. I feel people that are like, no, that's not real. 
and they want to block it, they're going to block it from happening or they're going to just not see it even if it is happening. Um, but yeah, I feel that they're all connected. Yeah. I feel that I kind of feel like Bigfoot is kind of almost, you know, because you, the orbs definitely seem to be kind of connected to them because they, a lot of people do see the orbs along with the Bigfoot. They do see like, like how can something that large just kind of almost disappear? You know, when people do kind of see them, they're, they're there and then they're like, where they go, you know, and they're so silent. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of thought the same after I started watching the Skinwalker Ranch and they keep talking about portals and gateways and right. there, there's a lot of strange phenomenon happening there. And they've talked about Bigfoot's being on the ranch, dog like creatures. And it's like, where would something like that hide out in the desert? Right. Right. I believe there's portals where they can go from one place to the other, especially someplace like that. Like, there's really not too many places for them to go. I think that they travel through portals or, you know, something like that from place to place. Because they obviously are not going to walk across the desert. Somebody's going to definitely see them. Yeah. And they, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you think that there's portals here in Missouri and like, are they uh, like in the same place? Do you, do you think, or they can just open up anywhere? What's your opinion on that? I think they can open a portal wherever they need to. And I almost wonder if these orbs that we see are something to do with that portal. And that's kind of what I've been wondering if these glowing orbs might have something to do with the portal or something on that line i don't know it, it's something i've kind of been thinking about the more i look into it um but i think that I don't think the portals are stationary. I think that they can kind of create them as they need them. Yeah. You know, because people build houses everywhere anymore and, you know, so they obviously would have to move and be able to open up somewhere else. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I've taken reports from people in the city that say they've seen a Sasquatch looking through their window and um, UFOs, things like that. And um, it's very possible. I mean, there was that incident in L.A. where I guess like a UFO crashed in somebody's yard and they saw like these tall grays. And right now there's something going on in Miami, Florida, where they had the entire mall shut down. And apparently there's like thousand cops there and they won't tell anybody they also shut down the airports i'm not sure if i'm allowed to even talk about this because it seems like they're blocking everyone from even talking about it yeah i was like something um a friend of mine posted on um oh what was it, instagram about it and all of a sudden her post came up false information <laughs> and i was like okay what did you post cindy because <laughs> i didn't get to see it yeah, and I, I shared it with somebody she else. Said is they deleted it. Okay. She said, yeah, they not only made it false information, but they turned around and deleted her post. So <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. I tried sharing that link from Miami, Florida with somebody, and I went back to click on it, and it says it's no longer available. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, so I really haven't had a chance to dig into that because I can't find nothing about it. So. Yeah, so we're not being told what's going it, on. Yeah, if they're if they're hiding it, then there's something going on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because if it wasn't that big of a deal, they'd tell us what happened. And, um, yeah, I mean, the whole thing is strange. I don't even know what to think about it. And I think, 
even if you're not a believer of the paranormal or cryptid subject, I think you, you're going to be scratching your head on this one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Laura, do you have any more experiences to share? Anything else you can think of? Um, not of my own personal experiences. Um, other than I've had a lot of like spiritual experiences with uh, ghosts and things like that. Um, but none major of my own. So. Yeah. Um, in these areas that you have the experiences in, have you heard any other encounters from locals, friends, family, anything like that? They are keeping, if they have had them, other than what Fritz has told me, they're keeping it very quiet. And um, people around here don't really like to talk about it. <laughs> um, and if you do talk about it, they ridicule you. So, um, there's a couple that live in this area that um, they claim that they were abducted and the whole area just made such a mockery of them. Um, and I think they've been on the news and in the newspapers. So I think it, you can actually find their story. Um, so uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty well made a big, a big, mockery of and everything and i'm like um who are we to say what actually happened to them you know we didn't we weren't there <laughs> so you know but i guess it depends on if you believe or if you've had an, any kind of experience yourself so yeah yeah absolutely and um you plan on doing more camping at the current river the big piney all those areas yes i was going to go this summer but this summer i ended up moving um and stuff like that so i didn't get a chance to go out but um this summer coming up um as soon as i can i plan on going back down that area um camping and just getting out and doing more um i know i can't camp like it devils well that place i i get i get an anxiety just trying to get there um i don't know if you've ever been there i've it's, heard of it um the the anxiety i get there just to get there is one thing but when i get there it's just the feelings i get when i get there is just like um it's just very odd and like there's something different about that place and i don't know if it's just because it's setting kind of in a basin or or what it is about it but um i do want to go back there and kind of check it out a little closer <laughs> you know and check out the woods a little more but i know not really a whole lot of people go there but they do keep it mowed and keep it cleaned up pretty good but um that's one of the places I really want to go this summer. So, yeah. Why Hopefully. do you think they call it the Devil's Well? There is, and I've been down in it. Um, it's a. I don't think it, I don't know if it was an actually a well, but they actually have steps where you can go all the way down in it, and you can see down into a cavern below that is full of water. And it's a lot of steps. And the last time I was down it, the steps were getting pretty bad so i don't know if they've ever fixed them but you're going literally down in what looks like a rock lined well and it's all mossy and water and there's like when you get down to the bottom you're literally looking through a metal gate that they've got like so nobody can get in there and you're looking into a cavern down into water and so when you look up all you can see is green, wet, drippy moss for I don't know how many feet and blue sky. So it's just like climbing down inside of a well. Why they call it Devil's Well, I don't know. I've never been able to find any research why it's got that name, but it is pretty spectacular to go down in there. 
Um, but I've not been able to find out why it's got that name. Yeah. I almost wonder if like caves, rivers, springs, things like that are, um, potentially a portal. And I mean, not always, but I mean, there's a lot of spiritual encounters where people see something in a cave or, um, near a spring. So I don't know. It's hard to say. I think Albert Einstein talked about like vortexes and things like that. And he described it as water going down the sink and like kind of like how it spins like a tornado. And he was talking yeah. about how a portal would be the same way. Yes. Yeah. That's how I always pictured a portal. Like it was going to suck you right in and like in a circle and then you're going to be coming out the other side somewhere. And that part kind of scares me because to me, I wouldn't know where somewhere is going to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like the unknown. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And, um, it seems like the cryptids like to stick around water, caves, springs, and, um, maybe it's not just for water and food. Right. Okay. Right. It's like they use it for travel and, Yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right, Laura. Well, it's getting late on this Saturday night, and I know you want to get back to enjoying the rest of your evening. And um, it was really good talking to you and hearing your encounters and experiences. And I'm glad that you reached out to me to share them with everyone. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me, Miguel. Yeah, absolutely. And if you ever experience anything else, feel free to reach back out to me. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And you have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right, Laura, thank you very much for being a guest on the show. And it was certainly a pleasure hearing all your encounters and experiences. I also enjoyed hearing your ideas and theories regarding the topic. I think you're a very intelligent person and you are very kind as well. And that really means a lot to me. I think it's cool that you got a good glimpse of that UFO and you have to wonder how many times have you been around these things and just haven't seen them like when you're sleeping or in your house or just not looking up into the sky and it very well could be connected to the cryptid phenomenon. A few things that really caught my attention is when you were talking about the canine like creature and the description of its face. I wonder if it was more like a bear and we talked about it being kind of like a Rottweiler but I've heard that several times and I've also seen a canine creature one day near the Merrimack River. Another important thing that you mentioned was on the UFO that it had three bright lights, but one light was brighter than the rest. And I clearly remember that whenever I seen the triangle shaped object float over my house. And I clearly remember that the light in the back right side of this triangle was a lot brighter than the left side or the front side and that really caught my attention. But yeah, I appreciate everyone for listening tonight. Thank you, everyone. Subscribe if you can, and take care. God bless, everyone.